Hey again, scientists. Welcome back for Lesson 5 of Natural Selection with me, Ms. Shetha, coming at you again from Seattle, Washington. Here's what you'll need for this lesson. A pencil or a pen, some line or blank paper, an optional but highly encouraged, a family member, friend, or a pet that you can check in with, a computer logged in to Amplify, and if you have one, a Lesson 5 packet that you receive from your teacher. All right, let's have everyone get those minds working and let's warm up with this little exercise here. Here's what I would like you to do. Turn and talk to a friend or a family member or jot your responses down on a piece of paper about the following questions ref which refer to this diagram right here. What do you notice about the traits of the offspring compared to the parents? Now, first thing I want you to notice on this diagram, it's set up kind of like a family tree. So on the top of the diagram here, we have parents, and at the bottom here, we have offspring, okay? So parents and offspring. And this question is asking you to compare the traits of the offspring compared to the traits of the parents. So what do you notice there? Second question, where do organisms get their traits? Start thinking about this. We kind of um, understood a little bit about this with our reading about jellyfish from the last lesson. So think about how would you answer this question? Where do organisms get their traits? Pause the video, grab someone near you, text a friend, Snapchat them, whatever you'd like to do, and think about this diagram and these two questions. When we have someone to talk to, we can really process a little bit more about what's going on. So pause the video now. Go ahead, do it. Okay, so I'm going to share with you now um, some of the things I notice about this diagram and reference these two questions that we are thinking about as we start this lesson, okay? So uh, first thing I notice, parent one here, his name is Otis, and he has a brown body. He's got some purple stripes on his abdomen, which is the back part of his body, and he's got these hairs coming off of his legs. Um, and the hairs are there, um, but comparatively, Anne has got a lot more hairs on her legs, and Anne's body is white. I can see that she has a black set of stripes on her abdomen. And so I noticed that these two parent spiders, Otis and Anne, um, are very different in the way that they appear. And I, that makes me think about how their traits for things like their body color and their stripe color and their... Um, hairs on their legs are pretty different. Um, so this makes me wonder about like, oh wow, I wonder like their offspring are probably going to be interesting too. So taking a look at their offspring, I see there's one, two, three offspring spiders that have white bodies, kind of like Anne, and then one offspring spider that has a brown body like Otis. Now in terms of stripe color, this is very interesting. There's all sorts of combinations going on here from what I notice. In terms of stripe color, I see here that there's one, two, three. These two, these three offspring spiders have um, black stripes on their abdomen. And this is a really unique combination because we have the black on top of the brown, which we did not see in this in the parents, which is super interesting. And then we have one spider that does have that purple stripe color like Otis does. But this is interesting too. The offspring spider, that's okay. That's interesting. It has um, a purple stripe color on the white body, which we also did not see before in the two parent spiders. Um, okay, let me let me think about this uh, the hair on their um, legs as well. So you can see there's lots of variation in the hairs. Um, none of them have as many as Anne, um, but a lot of them have more hair on their legs than Otis does. So that's really interesting to me. So I'm beginning to wonder like, what, how did this happen? There's lots of different combinations going on here. I, wanna, I definitely wanna know more about that. 
Now, in terms of the second question, where do organisms get their traits? Well, I remember from the reading, there was something about genes, there was something about proteins, and those two seem to be connected in the way these traits like body color or stripe color or um, hair on the legs is expressed. So I think there's something going on there, that connection between genes, proteins, and traits, but I can't remember exactly. Well, we're going to dive in more of that, and we're going to use spiders as our, our uh, subject, so to speak, to understand a little bit more about the connection between those three things, like we began talking about last lesson with those jellyfish.